In this video, we are going to talk about disturbing unsolved mysteries. Please subscribe and type subscribed in the comment section below. The Dyatlov Pass incident was an event in which nine Soviet trekkers died in the northern Ural Mountains between February 1 and 2, 1959, in uncertain circumstances. The experienced trekking group from the Ural Polytechnical Institute, led by Igor Dyatlov, had established a camp on the eastern slopes of Politsyakl in the Russian SSSR of the Soviet Union. Overnight, something caused them to cut their way out of their tent and flee the campsite while inadequately dressed for the heavy snowfall and sub-zero temperatures. After the group's bodies were discovered, an investigation by Soviet authorities determined that six of them had died from hypothermia while the other three had been killed by physical trauma. One victim had major skull damage, two had severe chest trauma, and another had a in his skull. Four of the bodies were found lying in running water in a creek, and three of these four had damaged soft tissue of the head and face. Two of the bodies had missing eyes, one had a missing tongue, and one had missing eyebrows. The investigation concluded that a compelling natural force had caused the deaths. Numerous theories have been put forward to account for the unexplained deaths, including animal attacks, hypothermia, an avalanche, catabatic winds, infrasound-induced panic, military involvement, or some combination of these factors. Russia opened a new investigation into the incident in 2019, and its conclusions were presented in July 2020 that an avalanche had led to the deaths. Survivors of the avalanche had been forced to suddenly leave their camp in low visibility conditions with inadequate clothing and had died of hypothermia. Andrei Kuryakov, deputy head of the regional prosecutor's office, said, it was a heroic struggle, there was no panic, but they had no chance to save themselves under the circumstances. A study led by scientists from EPFL and ETH Zurich, published in 2021, suggested that a type of avalanche known as a slab avalanche could explain some of the trekkers' injuries. A mountain pass in the area was later named Dyatlov Pass in memory of the group. In many languages, the incident is now referred to as the Dyatlov Pass incident. However, the incident occurred about 1,700 meters away, on the eastern slope of Kalitsakl. A prominent rock outcrop in the area now serves as a memorial to the group. It is located about 500 meters, 1,600 feet, to the east-southeast of the actual site of the final camp. In 1959, a group was formed for a skiing expedition across the northern Urals in Sverdlovsk Oblast, Soviet Union. According to Prosecutor Tempelov, documents that were found in the tent of the expedition suggest that the expedition was named for the 21st Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and was possibly dispatched by the local Komsomol organization. 4. Igor Dyatlov, a 23-year-old radio engineering student at the Ural Polytechnical Institute, now Ural Federal University, was the leader who assembled a group of nine others for the trip, most of whom were fellow students and peers at the University 5. The initial group consisted of eight men and two women, but as noted below one member started the hike but later turned back due to health issues. Each member of the group was an experienced grade guy hiker with ski tour experience and would be receiving grade III certification upon their return six. At the time, grade III was the highest certification available in the Soviet Union and required candidates to traverse 300 kilometers, 190 miles. Six, the route was designed by Dyatlov's group to reach the far northern regions of Sverdlovsk Oblast and the upper streams of the Lazva River. Seven, the route was approved by the Sverdlovsk City Route Commission. This was a division of the Sverdlovsk Committee of Physical Culture and Sport, and they confirmed the group of 10 people on January 8, 1959. 7. The goal of the expedition was to reach Otorten, Otorten, a mountain 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles, north of the site where the incident occurred. This route, estimated as a Category IV, was undertaken in February, the most difficult time to traverse. On 23 January 1959, the Dyatlov group was issued their route book, which listed their course as following the No-5 trail. At that time, the Sverdlov City Committee of Physical Culture and Sport listed approval for 11 people 7. The 11th person listed was Semyon Zolotaryov, who was previously certified to go with another expedition of similar difficulty, the Sogren Expedition Group. 
Seven, the Dyatlov group left the Sverdlov city, today Yekaterinburg, on the same day they received the route book. The group arrived by train at Ivdal, Ivdal, a town at the center of the northern province of Sverdlovsk Oblast in the early morning hours of January 25, 1959, 12. They then took a truck to Vizai, Vizai, a lorry village that is the last inhabited settlement to the north 13. While spending the night in Vizai, the skiers purchased and ate loaves of bread to keep their energy levels up for the following day's hike 14. On January 27, they began their trek toward Gora Otorton. On January 28, one member, Yuri Yudin, who had several health ailments, including rheumatism and a congenital heart defect, turned back due to knee and joint pain that made him unable to continue the hike 1516. The remaining eight hikers continued the trek. Diaries and cameras found around their last campsite made it possible to track the group's route up to the day preceding the incident 17. On 31 January, the group arrived at the edge of a highland area and began to prepare for climbing. In a wooded valley, they catched surplus food and equipment that would be used for the trip back. The next day, the hikers started to move through the pass. It seems they planned to get over the pass and make camp for the next night on the opposite side, but because of worsening weather conditions, snowstorms, and decreasing visibility, they lost their direction and deviated west toward the top of Collet Sackle. When they realized their mistake, the group decided to set up camp there on the slope of the mountain, rather than move 1.5 kilometers (0.93 miles) downhill to a forested area that would have offered some shelter from the weather. 16. Yudin speculated, Dyatlov probably did not want to lose the altitude they had gained, or he decided to practice camping on the mountain slope. 16. Before leaving. Dyatlov had agreed he would send a telegram to their sports club as soon as the group returned to Vizai. It was expected that this would happen no later than 12. February, but Dyatlov had told Yudin, before he departed from the group, that he expected it to be longer. When the 12th passed and no messages had been received, there was no immediate reaction, as delays of a few days were common with such expeditions. On 20 February, the travelers' relatives demanded a rescue operation, and the head of the institute sent the first rescue groups, consisting of volunteer students and teachers. 16 later, the army and militia, police, forces became involved, with planes and helicopters ordered to join the operation. Thanks for watching.